Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Tom Bowley, Chief Market Strategist at EarningsBeats.com, and this is Trading Places Live. It's Thursday, June 22nd, 2023, and I'm pre-recording this Trading Places Live for just a little bit later this morning. Currently, we have futures uh, a little bit lower once again. Dow futures down 100, S&P 500 futures down 1150, and the NASDAQ futures down 49 points. Crude oil uh, down a buck forty this morning. That's almost two percent. Back down near uh, seventy one dollars a barrel, and the U.S. ten year Treasury yield up two basis points, nearing three point seven five percent. So that's how uh, we're approaching the start of the day. We've been in a short term downtrend here, so I'm not too surprised by the gap down. That kind of continues the weakness that we've seen uh, really since the end of last week. Uh, this is historically a, a not so great week. Um, it's also just past options expiration, which can create some problems as well. So I think that combination, um, along with just the overbought conditions we had, I think uh, leading to some of the short-term selling, we'll want to watch uh, some of the key support levels. There'll be a lot of 20-day moving averages that will begin to come into play if we continue to see weakness, and that's what I would be looking for. Um, let's go ahead and go through today's agenda before we get started. I'll uh, start with the uh, daily market recap, then we'll get into talking technically, uh, chart of the day, uh, movers and shakers, industry groups, earnings spotlight, and the three you must see. So it's pretty full schedule. going to try to get through all this as quickly as I can. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll start off with that uh, daily market recap. So let's take a look at the action. So on uh, Wednesday, we saw the Dow Jones Industrial Average drop 102 points, S&P 500 down 23, NASDAQ down 203 points, mid caps down three, small caps down a little less than two points, and transports actually gained uh, 3.6 points. So across the board, the weakness was really centered in the NASDAQ. The more aggressive stocks, which had been leading, even through option expiration week, which is very, well, somewhat unusual, when you have such a big run up prior to options expiration, normally we see what I call opposite George week, where we normally see whatever's been working doesn't work and what hasn't been working starts to work. That really wasn't the case during option expiration week. But as we tell our members, sometimes that can linger into the week following options expiration week because anybody who exercises options puts market makers on the other side of the trade going into the following week. So it can linger and many times does. In fact, uh, the Monday following option expiration, monthly option expiration, the Monday that follows that is historically the worst day of the calendar month. Uh, now, of course, this week, Monday was Juneteenth day. So we had a market holiday. And as a result, Tuesday was the first day after options expired, monthly options expired. And it wasn't a great day. Uh, wasn't horrible, but it wasn't great. And we continued to see that uh, weakness yesterday. We saw a little bit more accelerated selling in the morning. Then we came back and tried to get close to break even on the major indices or maybe even go positive. Didn't quite get there. And then in the last 10 minutes, market took a pretty good drop again, um, uh, leading, I think, probably to the weakness that we're seeing in futures this morning. Um, I do want to point out, though, that transportation stocks finished higher. This is a group that's been leading the industrials. Industrials have broken out to all-time highs. I think this is the start of a bigger run-up in transports. So um, I wouldn't be surprised to see industrials hold their own, maybe even outperform for a period of time. And I'm talking about outperforming the S&P 500. Um, and I think that leadership could come from transportation stocks. I like the airlines. I like the railroads. I think the railroads are just getting going after uh, a lengthy period of lagging on a relative basis. That's good news for the market anytime we get the transport ports rolling. And it makes sense because some of the other areas, the more aggressive growth areas, very overbought. And so we're seeing some money rotate here, which I think is a good thing. Um, utilities led yesterday. So you got a little bit of money moving into defense, but again, that's not too unusual when the market's down. That's normally what happens. You take profits in the areas that had been leading the market, and you see money rotate into areas that really hadn't participated as much. So we saw utilities do well. Energy did well. Industrials, as I mentioned, uh, also doing well here. 
So those three were up anywhere from eight tenths of 1% to a little bit more than half of 1%. And then you had technology, home of those aggressive growth stocks, falling 1.5% discretionary, which had been on a roll really for the last few months, three, four months, but especially over the last month. And discretionary took a hit of 1.2%. And then I just wanted to mention Intel because the semiconductors finally started to sell off a little bit here in the last couple of days. Intel, after a stealth move to the upside, is feeling it right back to the downside. Intel lost 6% yesterday, rapidly approaching its 20-day moving average. That also, that 32.5 area closed at 32.90. But 32.5 was an area where Intel had struggled to get through in the past. So we get through it, broken resistance, should become support, we're going to find out as Intel approaches its 20-day moving average and price support. The uh, 10-year Treasury yield. So here um, you can see that the uh, 10-year Treasury yield yesterday was up close to 380, but it did move back down and finish near its low of the day, 3.72%. Um, not a whole lot going on in terms of economic reports. It is Thursday, so we'll get the initial jobless claims out a little bit later this morning. Of course, by the time you hear this recording, you should have that information. Uh, last week, initial jobless claims was 262,000. We're expecting a slight drop, very minor drop, 261,000. But this number can be a precursor to um, uh, a move up in the unemployment rate. If you start seeing uh, the initial jobless claims rising, especially if they start to rise significantly. They have come up off the lows, so I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, the uh, unemployment rate begin to tick a little bit higher, but uh, still initial jobless claims pretty low uh, historically. Uh, but anyway, we'll have that report out later this morning, so check that out. Um, let's move on. Talking technically, we've got the S&P 500. Mentioned this a couple of days ago. We saw that... Uh, one of the very few days over the course of the last month or two where we actually closed on the lows of the day. Normally, we've even when we've had down days, intraday, we've had the tendency to come back up and close on the uh, upper side, if not even all the way toward the top of the trading day uh, or of that trading range. But if you look at this AD line down here, it is starting to roll over a little bit because we're starting to see some red candles. We're actually closing below the open. And that's taken that AD line down a little bit. Now, I, I suspect that we could have weakness down to the 20-day moving average and maybe even a little bit below uh, just as a spook. I mean, we saw that back in April and May. Uh, I don't know that we would go all the way down to the 50-day, but that would be possible if things really were to escalate. Uh, but I'd be looking initially for the 20-day. And I think accumulating, I always talk about um, using leverage and when I use leverage. I use it either on a breakout or on a pullback. Um, if I'm not in it, I catch the breakout right when it's happening. Then a lot of times I'll get into the leveraged uh, ETF when we see the breakout. Otherwise, I like get in on a pullback. And so this is uh, something I'm watching right now is just as it pu pulls back, uh, thinking about increasing exposure by being in more leveraged products. Uh, the end of June, through about the third week to maybe halfway through the third week of July tends to be a very strong period for U.S. equities. We tend to see the market do pretty well during that period. So this pullback uh, just ahead of that could be a pretty nice entry, at least certainly a, a lower risk entry than what we would have had just a couple of days ago. So I like the fact that we're pulling back. I think this is relieving some of the overbought conditions. And you can see it, I think, pretty well right there on the chart with the uh, S&P 500. Uh, next up, the NASDAQ 100. Let's uh, check this out. Same deal, pretty much. The uh, PPO remains strong. And when I say remains strong, some might look at this and say, well, what do you mean? We're getting a crossover. I don't really pay much attention to the crossovers. I look at highs. Highs in terms of price. Where was the PPO when highs were established? And if that... PPO keeps going higher, then you have no negative divergence. And pullbacks from time to time are just normal happenings. So we'll see. Now you can look back and you could say, well, what about 
you know, here that cross was led to some selling. What about this cross? Look at all that selling. Or what about this cross? Look at all that selling. Well, first of all, the one that goes the furthest back, we were in a cyclical bear market. We didn't really come out of that until mid-October. So when you start looking at indicators and you look in a bull market, which I think we're resuming, those indicators are not going to do what they did when they were in a bear market. In a bear market, the momentum stays to the downside. So PPOs, when they cross that, that trigger line, usually that is a good sell signal. You go back and look at bull markets, and that's what a lot of technicians are doing right now, which quite honestly drives me crazy, is you're starting to look at the technicals now and comparing them to a year ago. A year ago, we were in a bear market. Now, in my opinion, we're in a bull market. I don't think you can look at these indicators and expect to see the same things that you saw a year ago. Again, my opinion, feel free to disagree. Um, but I don't care about this move back. What I would care more about is the PPO going negative. Now it is on a daily chart, so it still wouldn't be awful. We do see the daily PPOs go negative during bull market advances, but it's not as frequent. And it should at least get the hair up on the back of your neck to be thinking about, hey, what else is going on in the market? Are there things that are piling up that I should be concerned about? And so that would be a discussion for down the road if we continue to see more significant selling. But the near, near term, I mean, my gosh, we've been straight up for a couple of months. Doesn't the market deserve some profit taking, a little pullback? So watch that 20-day moving average. That'll be the first key. All right, let's move on to um the chart of the day anytime i talk about the chart of the day i like to point out for you to go over to earningsbeats.com this is our home uh, if you scroll down on our home page you'll see an area where you can sign up for the earnings beats digest this is a three times a week free newsletter no credit card required you can unsubscribe at any time the only thing it takes is name and email address so if you got one of each of those you can put them in here hit that subscribe button we'll get you set up we also have a free event coming up in a couple of weeks. It's going to be a really big one. And anybody who is subscribed to our Earnings Beats Digest gets invites to all of our free events. So that is uh, one other reason to make sure you're signed up to the Earnings Beats Digest so that you can be uh, attend, if you'd like, some of our free events. And honestly, I think there's tremendous value in our free events. We do like to try to give back to the community. Um, and uh, I think that would be one great way to maybe expand your market knowledge um, and uh, some of your maybe technical toolkit is by following along what we do uh, throughout um, all the things we do at Earnings Beats, but especially some of those free events because they don't cost you anything. I don't know why you wouldn't. Uh, but anyway, check that out. Make sure you get subscribed. We'd love to have you. If you want to try our service, we do have a 30-day free trial. You have to give credit card for that, but we will not charge you after your 30 days until we've sent you an email and reminded you. I know personally for me, I don't like to get involved in some of these free 30-day trials because a lot of times you forget about it and then you get charged and you're like, darn, I can't believe I forgot. We're going to help you with that. We're going to remind you. We don't want you to pay us unless you really feel like our service is going to help you. Anyway, 30-day, no-cost trial. Uh, get set up there. You can click on that button um, if you are interested. We have a lot of big events coming up as we get into earnings season. There'll be more and more events for our members. Uh, so this will be a great time to uh, check out the service over the next 30 days. All right. Um, let's keep moving and take a look at the chart of the day. So today I thought we'd look at Qualcomm. So Qualcomm, and I'm going to pull this up on a uh, relative chart basis. The AD line looks really good. Even though prices, you can see, have continued to move lower over the course of the last six months to a year, look at the AD line actually breaking out to 52-week highs. So on the surface, using just that one technical indicator, I'd say, hey, that looks pretty good. But at some point, you still need to get technical confirmation. You need to see prices break out. I mean, the AD line's nice. And it makes it appear like, hey, there's a lot of accumulation going on. But without a price breakout, it brings it into question. And bringing it further into question is when you see its relative chart 
versus its peer group, which is the semiconductors, at 52-week lows. And it's been going down now for months and months. So is it truly being accumulated? I mean, the AD line is a signal, but it's not a guarantee. And that's this is one of the ways I use the AD line. I mean, I like seeing an AD line that's very strong, like the one that is right here on the Qualcomm chart. But it's not making sense, not based on what I'm seeing in price action, not based on what I'm seeing in relative strength. I mean, if a stock's being accumulated, don't you think that it would be beating its peers? It's hard to have massive accumulation in a stock and be one of the worst stocks in your industry group. That makes no sense. No common sense. And honestly, that's what I'm all about at Earnings Beats. It's about looking at the stock market using common sense. So Qualcomm, that AD line can go up as much as it wants. I'm not interested until I start to see some breakouts. Now we have a double bottom here down around 100. So clearly from a reward to risk perspective, 100 is probably the best area to enter the stock. I don't know if we're going to go back down there, but we need to break out above probably about 137 or so before, in my opinion, this chart begins to confirm what we're seeing on the AD line. I mean, we couldn't even get past this relative, or not relative, but this uh, price high at the end of March, just that little reaction high back to 127. We got up just above 125, rolled back over last three days, right back down. And you've got, um, um, the 20 day moving average, no longer holding. Looks to me like we're going to probably head back somewhere to test this gap support area and the 50 days right at the top of it. So maybe we go down to 113, maybe look for a reversal there. But in the meantime, I've got problems with Qualcomm because I just don't see enough corroborating information. In other words, the only reason, in my opinion, this stock hasn't broken down is because it's part of one of the strongest areas in the market. Semiconductors have been on fire. So to the extent that a rising tide lifts all boats, I think that's helping to lift Qualcomm. Even though Qualcomm has not been a great performer, I think it's actually keeping it from breaking down. So not a fan here. Qualcomm's got a lot of work to do. All right, go to movers and shakers first. Because I want to show you um, the stocks that led the advance and had been leading the advance in 2023 and really leading the NASDAQ over the S&P 500 because these stocks are more heavily weighted in the NASDAQ than in the S&P 500. But whether you're bullish or bearish, whether you want the market to go up or go down, you've got to watch these stocks because these are the stocks that will help drive the stock market either higher or lower, lower because of their weighting in the index. I'm not talking about W-A-I-T-I-N-G. I'm talking about W-E-I-G-H-T-I-N-G, the weighting, how much weight they have in the overall index. So let's start first with Apple. Uh, Apple, you can see there, there's your January low. Apple is the uh, highest weighted, most heavily weighted stock in the S&P 500 and in the NASDAQ 100. It's also heavily weighted in the XLK, which is the technology sector ETF. Well, this is what's going on with Apple. Last couple of days, we've seen a little pullback. Not much, but a little. Apple's on a roll, broke to new all-time highs. It's okay to pull back a little bit. I think anything close to the 20-day moving average probably would be a buy for Apple for another move to the upside, especially as we head toward its earnings report. Then you got Microsoft, another huge component of the S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100, and the XLK. This has been a pretty big drop. We were over 350 a couple of days ago. Now we're at 333. Now, if you just looked the last two days, you say, wow, Microsoft's really dropping like a rock. Must be something wrong. Until you realize that back in early January, it was 220. So it's gone up, what, 60%? prior to just these last couple of days pulling back. But it was a reversing candle right there at the top, and we are pulling back. We're going to see if we hold on to the rising 20-day moving average. Failure could lead to some more selling. A false breakdown, maybe a hammer on the 20-day, would suggest we're going to go back to the upside. So let's see how Microsoft unfolds, but this is another big stock got to keep an eye on. 
How about NVIDIA? NVIDIA has just been a monster. After gapping up with its earnings report back at the end of May, it's just continued moving up. And yeah, yesterday it was down seven bucks. But just prior to earnings, it was 300. Yesterday it dropped seven bucks to 430. Still up over 40% in less than a month. So yeah, it pulled back a little bit. But hey, I think even a little bit more pullback would still be warranted. I mean, I'd be okay with the stock down near 400. How about Amazon? Amazon finally getting rolling, and that's finally gotten the discretionary group moving to the upside. Amazon, very, very strong um, weighting, very heavy weighting in the XLY, the biggest weighting. Um, Tesla rapidly catching it. Actually, I haven't looked recently, but Tesla has been on fire, so it might be getting close. Um, but this one, Amazon, you know, back at beginning of the year was 85. Now it's 125. It's up almost 50%. How about Tesla? Look at the move Tesla's made just here over the last two months. We were down close to 150. Yesterday, we were at a high of 277. So again, 50% move, or actually more than a 50% move. That's, uh, what, 125 bucks. Over 150, that's five, six. That's about 83% move to the upside in two months on Tesla. AD line going for the ride. There's your relative strength versus the autos. Tesla's been on a roll. Don't like yesterday's candle, though, on increasing volume. I would suspect that's going to lead to, lead to some more short-term selling. Rising 20-day moving average, though, would be where I'd be looking on Tesla. Last one, I'll pull up Google. Um, of all the stocks, I would say Google maybe is the one that's performed the least best, if you will. Uh, it, we were about $85 beginning of the year, and now we're 120 So we're still up pretty nicely, about 40% for the year. But that's less than the other stocks that I just went over. So Google may be underperforming a little bit. Seems to be rolling over here a little. The AD, as it moved up to its most recent high, the, the AD line actually rolled over. So it just seems like maybe it's gotten a little ahead of itself. I think you're going to find some great support probably between 112 and 115 on uh, Google. So watch that. All right, uh, industry groups. Let's just take a look at a couple of these. First, the semiconductors pulling back finally. But again, with that PPO stronger, I wouldn't look for much more than a 20-day test. Maybe we get down to 9,000, but I think maybe the 20-day, if we continue to see the selling at all. How about software? Software has been strong. Finally, we've got top here, slight negative divergence on this one. So if you lose the 20 day, they, there's definitely more room, perhaps to go all the way back down to fill this gap and to hit the 50 day moving average. So that could lead to a little bit more selling in the QQQ. So this one, I think, poses a bit more risk for the NASDAQ and for the QQQ, more so than the semiconductor group. How about internet stocks? Uh, just talked about Google, maybe not doing quite as well as some of the others. Uh, internet's been pretty strong overall, but you can see that that PPO rolling over there, AD line starting to maybe roll over just a bit. Let's see if the 20-day moving average holds. We got down as low as 29.26. Yesterday, the 20-day is 29.23 and change. So we could easily could test that later today. Do we hold? That would be a question. Now, we have some areas on the other side of the spectrum, though, that are performing much better as money rotates out of some of these aggressive areas. So look at an area like medical supplies. I mean, not only did we break out of this ascending triangle, and you can see the equal highs coming across, the rising lows, that is a bullish continuation pattern, continuing the prior uptrend that we saw from October to early February. Now we're just getting a breakout. Medical supplies looks like a great area. So if you've had a big run in technology, rotating into some areas of healthcare, industrials, even some of the defensive groups, makes sense to me right now. I think these are groups that will kind of pick up the slack as we see some of the selling that could take place in technology and uh, consumer discretionary and communication services. All right, um, let's move on. I want to go over the uh, earnings spotlight. So Accenture reported this morning, and I was talking about this on my show yesterday over at Earnings Beats, um, which we 
live stream on YouTube, by the way. Um, and ACN, I was really confused by what to expect out of the stock. The AD line looks strong. Looks like it's been accumulated. It's had a really big run up recently, really off the March low. We were down near 240, went up to 330. So that was like a 30 to 35% advance heading into earnings. So that seems like quite a bit. But then I look down here and it's kind of like the Qualcomm syndrome, except we have seen breakouts on ACN. But look at the relative strength. It's not been very strong, although it has come off of this double bottom and it seems to be picking up just recently. But I wasn't really sure. I said I wouldn't hold this stock into earnings because I just didn't feel comfortable about it. There were too many mixed signals. Well, you wouldn't have wanted to hold it into earnings because the stock's down $15 today, almost 5% after reporting earnings this morning. So we're going to start down at 297. I had said, you know, this stock could gap up. And I also said yesterday, wouldn't shock me if the stock opened around 290. Well, 297, not too far from there. So ACN not coming through with earnings, or at least the market not reacting positively. I have not seen the earnings. I'll be looking at that a little later this morning. But here you can see ACN falling back, not really, uh, not looking good with this morning's gap down. Um, also, we had uh, Darden Restaurants, DRI down 4% this morning. This one's been rolling pretty nicely to the upside. Back down to 159. Anything close to that 155 level, I think would be very interesting on DRI on the long side. I think this is a pretty look, good looking stock. Probably that um, gap down is going to turn out to be an opportunity. Um, and then FDS reported stock is up, or actually I'm not sure if they report reported this morning or if they report later today. I'd have to double check that. Um, actually it does say before the market opens. So I'm assuming that they did report, but a muted response at this point. Need to break out above 435, not there yet. All right, the three you must see, I'll go through these pretty quickly. I'm going to start off with um, Roblox. I mentioned this one a day or two ago on the same thing. I think it was on the three you must see. And it looked like it was trying to make a breakout above these prior highs, but couldn't do it. And this is why, from a technical perspective, short term, you want to sell at resistance. You want to see stocks get through, especially a stock that really hasn't been participating in the overall market. Now it breaks down below both its moving averages and the volume is picking up. Be careful with Roblox. Zoom. Every time this stock seems like it wants to get going, it just doesn't. Yesterday, down more than 5%. The AD line looks weak. Its relative strength is weak. There's time on Zoom. Let's at least see it start to develop an uptrend. Last one I have for you is MDGL. The only reason I'm mentioning this is that somewhere in the scooter formula, this slight move down, less than 2% yesterday, we saw the scooter drop from 99 to 34 on this stock yesterday. Stocks don't do that very often. I think a lot of it has to do with the huge gain right here. This big gap up was probably lost today based on like the five or six month moving averages. that the, I, If you go back and look at the scooter, there's a formula. And I think based on the formula, there was a big drop in the stock, probably having something to do with the fact that this gap now is no longer included in the calculation. That would be my uh, pretty educated guess on that one. Anyway, that's it for me. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Uh, love to have you come over to Earnings Beats, either as an Earnings Beats Digest free newsletter subscriber or check out our service. 30 days free. You do have to sign up with a credit card, though, but for the 30 days, you'll get everything we have to offer completely free of charge. Hope you'll check us out. Have a great day, everybody. Happy trading.